uh, I am using the same um, slide, almost the same slide. Something is slightly changing that I used last year. Because from this point of view, nothing has changed. And the first thing is uh, 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 modeling by components. I told you that uh, uh, we had experience with traditional modeling. We built really huge models with thousands of lines of codes. And uh, the result was that those codes are almost dead when they are finished. Because they were the product of many people that we were not use it to use it, you, um, able to improve them because the code was so long, uh, uh, let's say the normal path of a PhD student, three years. Uh, for getting costume with the old codes we have, you take two years. So you, you are not able to, uh, to pursue any improvement of the code or any reason of, uh, in your PhD life unless your PhD is uh, five years old. So, and that's one of the questions. The other thing is don't try it alone. Meaning that, uh, as I told you, this is a work that started uh, 12 years ago in particular for this one, but for me it's uh, 25 years ago that I work on, on these topics. So is it by myself is the work of 25 years plus the work of my uh, PhD students. And uh, so is a pretty amount of work of, uh, that nobody of you singularly, neither I can afford to do. What I mean for models? Uh, in our, in our uh, visual models are numerical models of, uh, that contain equations. So we have equations, which equations? The mass budget, hydrology is mainly the mass budget. The water budget on the soil surface that goes around. But also the energy budget. Uh, we will talk only partially of the energy budget because when we, we go to look for a buffer configuration. But the energy budget is a necessary component of the whole cycle. And obviously the third thing is, which is important in, in, even more in these days are the chemical transport. Chemical transport means pollutants, means tracers, means a lot of things. So we have these three types of conservation equations that we are using, and then we will talk about during the, the, the class. Models come, uh, as uh, I say, uh, we will concentrate on partial differential equations, even if you know that there are models that are statistical models, for instance. And nowadays, uh, nobody is a real man or woman if it doesn't do some uh, machine learning thing stuff, which is a different kind of statistical model. But we will not talk of, of about these topics. No statistics, no machine learning. Even if our framework contains tools to do machine learning. Any of our models comes with parameters, meaning that the equation has uh, uh, some fixed uh, part that are uh, that take numerical values. So uh, the the concept is that we have to find a way to solve these budgets, but we have also to find a way to fix these parameters. Without this operation, fixing the parameters, setting the parameters, calibrating the parameters, we are not able to uh, at all to, to run the models. Uh, parameters can be heterogeneous in space and sometimes it can also change time so yeah, in reality 
they could not be parameters. But for sure, they can change in space. So we have, we have to, to treat with the variability of parameter in space. And then, obviously, we have a lot of data. Data which are uh, usual, usually unusable in models. If you don't have vegetation in model, why you uh, write an introduction in one of your paper talking about vegetation? And for talking about vegetation, you have to have data about vegetation. And we have plenty of data about vegetation now from satellites, for instance. We have plenty of data uh, from, from remote sensing in general. We have less data from other traditional um, measurement type gauge, like uh, uh, a <coughs> main gauge, and uh, above all, um, discharge gauges. But we, have a, 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 we need a way to treat the data. Data is part of the problem. So I told you that usually we did a model we start programming the, our code, maybe doing some plan before uh, how we want to code. Well, we have this process, this other process, many processes together. We start to write our our codes in traditional language like C or Fortran or C++ or etc. But all the code connected together. When when a developer takes five years to develop such code and to write <coughs> thousands of lines of code, then you have to give, or at least for me, I have to give to the next PhD student. Next PhD student has a two-way, reading these thousand lines of codes, entering the mind of his previous fellow. In the previous fellow, in the meantime, uh, went to Antarctica to the, or, uh, in many places of the world, working is not anymore available to know what the hell is was thinking, she was thinking when he was doing that thing. And so the code is a practical, you can use maybe the code because you know how to use it, but it is very difficult to change. This is a bad thing for science because uh, if nowadays we do science through models, uh, uh, so this, this type of science integrally is not anymore uh, verifiable. We cannot check if, especially if something goes wrong. It's a bad thing for progress. We cannot build on the, on the shoulders of each other. So the idea is to separate the, the, this big code in chunks of code, separated, isolated, informatically isolated, Usually, this is an aptitude. It's not just a, a, a way to uh, build in informatics. An aptitude to separate your problem in various parts that you can connect it inside also a monolithic code. But uh, in what we learn here in our system, the chunks of code are built in in the informatics, meaning that you build chunks and then you connect the chunks at the end through a scripting language, which is another level of programming, but usually simpler. So you have, to, for having a thing like this, you have your components, you see it's, a, it's this uh, paint like a Lego, because you can plug. What is clearly specified is the input and the output. And knowing just the input and the output, you can work with it. We already say, in the traditional code, third party revision of the code is very difficult. Sometimes uh, happens, but usually is very difficult. Model falsification is impossible. Quite impossible. Expect and most of the time, also, you don't have the code to do this operation of falsification. You don't know if your colleague is, 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 is cheating, essentially. You can argue externally, 
but you cannot falsify the LED model. And so, this is what I already said several times. When something goes wrong, you don't know what is, where it is wrong, why it is wrong. You can work, do some work around, but you don't know. So the idea is uh, when you're using components, as I told you before, is to uh, go in the spirit of Galileo, saying that you have to do experiment with your, your code. You, are, you need to be able to analyze each part of the code, do it in experiment, and know if the work if they work. But this is not enough, in my view, in our view. We developed our code to be open source, so someone with the appropriate knowledge can inspect the internals of the code and see if we did something wrong. So, and we try that in, in the way that informatics helps structurally the, the revision, not just as a, 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 a thing that you uh, that you use later, or having chunks of code is also uh, uh, makes the code easy to maintain, easier to maintain, because you have to maintain separately the single chunks when you know that they work together. And so you can concentrate on a single part. From the point of view of a PhD student, as most of you are, is also good for you because when you have a big code, you don't know who is the owner, who is the, uh, the author of the code. Here you can develop your component, put your name on, even if, you, if it is open source, even if it is uh, available to other, but that code that you developed is your, your intellectual property is well defined by the informatics. The other problem is we, we don't know what, what are the models. You know, which is our opinion on how we have to do models. The other is, but for who are you are doing model? And most, sometimes for the PhD students, you, you are doing a model for yourself, for your own research, for the research of your uh, advisor, maybe a supervisor, or the, the one you are designing. But in reality, when you look a little bit longer, you are creating a model because there are uh, useful things to do. The first, obviously, is the one to understanding processes, which is most of, of the time the work I do. But there are some other role and users. Uh, for instance, you have, let's say the users. You have a researcher, most of you are researchers. Uh, you have technical users, meaning that uh, the researchers like me is more interesting, interesting to know how the process work, how, how to build a model maybe. So the more, and when, when I, sometimes I, uh, obviously I am joking, but I say, okay, when I have built the model, my work is finished. I don't run my model. I build my car, I build my Mercedes or Ferrari, but someone else drive the Ferrari. This is the technical use. Technical users usually don't code the core code, the core of the model, but use the model for doing forecasting, for instance. <coughs> then we have other end users. How, who, who are other end users? Uh, but technical users actually are uh, different. Uh, the technical users they do for doing professional work, and they are those working in an institution. They are uh, and their goals are actually not the same. But uh, other end users are politicians, for instance, policy makers. So you want to do model because some policy maker has to prioritize policies 
in, in, a, in a certain uh, ideological area. So models are used, can be used for that. Okay, sometimes uh, po po uh, the policies are done just on intuitions maybe, but intuition fails more than models. And then there are uh, other users like prime user people that uh, like you and me when we go on Facebook or uh, I don't know, LinkedIn, we look at the work of the other and just uh, we, are, uh, we get some pleasure to see that someone is studying climate change, for instance, or flooding and see the results, some of the results. And this is the other uh, type of prime users. And then you have, you see, different roles. They are the hard coders. In this context, uh, my group is in the group of hard coders. Soft coders <coughs> the one that uh, work around the code, but the code is already there. Set the parameters, calibrate the parameters, maybe. Do some scripting for connect all the pieces. In this case, we, there is a new figure, which is the linker, because we have components. There is someone that can link the components in different ways to obtain different model solutions. And uh, runners who run the code, when you have all of the setup ready, you can give to a monkey the, 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 your model to run, and the, the monkey run the code with just a few instructions. Just uh, push, the, push the button, do this one, do this one. Essentially, and uh, without <laughs> wanting to offend my younger students, some of these models that can be used in very sophisticated way can be used at a very low level of uh, educational, uh, very low level of education, potentially also to high school students. Viewers and provider. Viewers are uh, who, who looks at the models and provider, who, the one who provides services to us. So there are, when we built our code, we have in mind, we had in mind all these kind of figures. And doing the model by components was useful to us to, uh, to put together all these things. So component-oriented software de development is our focus. Uh, the focus is uh, also, if you want, uh, in the modern programming um, framework, you, you want to not, to not to do much code, you want to reuse code. So that's the other things behind this. We don't create one, once one, some code works, you use it. You don't rewrite it, even if it can be interesting for you to know to rewrite some code to learn something because in doing you learn but most of the time if you have to if you have any time when you go home you have to build your your kitchen before to cook you you are going to be dead the same is valid for models so a components is a thing which is uh, uh, there is the implementation, potentially there is no uh, direct access to the internals. High uh, information hiding is the, the works in informatics for it. Now we give it open source, but potentially you don't have to touch what is in this side. And then you have an interface and then you have the plus, plus the other. Uh, this, uh, uh, this beliefs are more or less on how to program the code is, uh, is, is there from at least 25 years. Uh, last uh, software company like Microsoft, for instance, has hundreds of billions of lines of code. So they, they 
face the, the problem I have uh, showing to you before us, before the scientists. But we scientists arrived late. There were many and many, actually, uh, uh, type of framework that were proposed to do the software in this way. But there was not much success inside the, the, the scientific environment. Why there was no success? Because usually coding in this way that I proposed to you at the beginning was too invasive, was uh, too much impacting the way you were uh, a normal programmer program, doing his programming or her programming. And so, so it was more on the side of a computer scientist than on hydrologists. We need a, a, that infrastructure, the, 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 that thing, but the hydro hydrologist has to remain as much as possible in hydrologist, not becoming too much a, a, a computer scientist. So, we have to produce a different type of components. And uh, is what is done with the object modeling system that uh, all of them made in the ARS and the USDAB. So to sum up, we have these equations. We have these goals. When we have built a model, <coughs> someone or you used to work uh, in some institution but the model is just one step. Uh, our model you know, of uh, academic model, research model, is just one step because you have uh, maybe, in, for our case, weather forecast first, then we have the data, who collected the data, you have to do scenarios. You do have to interpret the input data and the output data. Yeah, you see many complex th things, you essentially don't know what is going on, even if you win, if the results of your model are correct. And so you have model for data interpretation, you have to take uh, strategies from policymaker, and if we have to do evaluation to the result of the model. Even this part can be other models. So one goal of our infrastructure is to be able for someone uh, to develop these parts around the core physics. Which uh, prerequisites uh, our, our modeling? As I say, open source. Potentially, programming by component doesn't need open source software. You require just that the interfaces uh, of the components are defined properly. Open source is, uh, anyway, a philosophy, is ideological, if you want, <laughs> but there's some uh, justification on science. Programming language that neutral. Actually, it's programming, programmed in a, in a language, but uh, there is so much knowledge in C, in C++, in, C++, in Fortran, and possibly you need to be able to recover that knowledge without them doing it. Platform neutral. It must work on Macintosh, on Linux. How many of you have Linux? Okay, Windows. <laughs> Most of you, I think that all of you is uh, Windows based. So, but if, if we want to, to run uh, to run <coughs> our model in each platform, Linux, macOS, and uh, in Windows. Business neutral, <coughs> meaning that you are a PhD student, you finish your PhD students, just the same from 10 to 15 percent of PhD students remain in academic research. So some of you want to start your own business based on the knowledge he acquired during the PhD. So he need to be able to use the components. Uh, our models are GPL, General Public License, which is a viral type of open source license. But you know, uh, using components, you can build your components uh, 
with the license that you want, and you can plug to, to our component that remain GPM. So we do the, the engine, but what is around is up to you if you make it free or not. And um, obviously, there is a big effort in doing uh, the program e efficient. You have to run, <coughs> the, the, your program has to run as fast as possible. But who has to be efficient is you, is me, before. I, if I have a program that run in one second instead of five seconds, but I take one month, to do the program that run in one second and one week to make a program that, that take five seconds, I certainly do the program of the work for five seconds. So your pro productivity, 95% of the time comes before the productivity of the computer. So this is one of our objectives. Obviously, we work in, on a, on, in the web. So our infrastructure has to be web connected. We are, need to be able to potentially, at least, to uh, deploy our technology to the, web, to the web. And have a client server uh, uh, mm, platform that run our software. Um, the other I, I have to say, database are work. Hydrologists usually do not work with databases. But it's absolutely essential when you go on operational, uh, when you have an operational horizon. You have to manage a database like an SQL the database, and then you have to be able to, to use it. Most of it must be, the thing you do have to be standard. If you do, uh, if you make it, uh, some uh, peculiar choices, uh, yeah, then you have a narrow, a narrow range of people that uh, will be using it. So as much as uh, all you see is open uh, geospace consortium, where is the, in, Kweshi is the consortium of university for the, the development of biological sciences. So the standard promoted by the community bar must be uh, included in the software. The other thing is uh, our computer are multi-core computers. So the first thing is that uh, your, the software has to use your multi-core computers. But we don't want, we want you to remain hydrologist, not to become informatics, not to take care of the of the uh, technologies that changes during the year about parallelization of your code. So yes, you in these times you have to take care of how to parallelize code. But if the system does it transparently for you is better. And this was our system actually. Documentation is an issue. It is an issue that, uh, but uh, uh, certainly uh, programming with uh, components makes it easier to inspect the code, but also to document the code and keep the, 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 the things uh, together. Uh, you have to, in the programming, you have to comply to, to to some standard to name the variables, and etc., etc. The software has to be in a control version system. Now, uh, the uni there are some, obviously, but uh, we use the heat. And so, <coughs> there is this paradox that was like a, a brought to my mind to some of collaborator, which is uh, open source software in one computer. Potentially my software is open source because I release with an open license, but it, it is just on my computer and it works on my computer. So 
the development of public repositories like Git is okay, and our software is there. And uh, having a standard way to expose documentation. <coughs> so, uh, in what I was talking, was talking about models. More or less, I gave you an idea of what I, uh, what I mean for models. Then what it is a model component, what it is an interface. A modeling framework for me, it was not clear what, what it is, but it's uh, the, the basic informatics, the underwear of the informatics that allow you to, to do your model in the, uh, in the way we, I, I try to define. And uh, uh, for us, it's the object modeling system. And workflow is the, the, the action that you have to, to take. One example that maybe at the end of the day, of the day we will be able to do is uh, the, this example that was uh, brought to us by Scott Peckham, a colleague working in Colorado, in Boulder, in Colorado. And uh, say this is a simple tank. Uh, you have the, the, the water, the comes into the tank and then we have some hydraulics that describe how the tank is, uh, uh, is uh, empty. And we have, uh, we will do a simple tank model first. A simple, simple tank model is not uh, a model of, uh, of the catchment, as complex as you see, but uh, as per simplification we can use it today. So we will do this. Obviously, the other thing of a component is that you, you can exchange the components. Yeah, to put it together a model, you have to put together several components, but you can have three or four or five or ten components for doing the same thing. For instance, we have 11 components for dealing with radiation, shortwave radiation. No, it's just one component actually, but we have 11 options. And uh, we have, you can have uh, three or four ways to do routing, three or four or many ways to do uh, production of rainfall, three or more ways to do evapotranspiration. And you can plug different things together to create different modeling solutions. So that's the, the, the end of the first part of, the, of this thing. <coughs> 